Let's go. Yeah, I like that. Changing Lives Ministries, Pastor Bradford has a now word for you. This word will bring healing. This word will bring deliverance. This word will take you to the next level in your life. So come on and join us as Pastor Bradford bring the word. So the Bible says the just shall live what? By faith. Now once you become a Christian, the most important thing you need to learn is faith. There is nothing more important to the Christian than faith. Did you hear what I just said? What's the most important thing? Faith. Now, I hear somebody thinking, love. Anybody thought, did anybody think that? Yeah, yeah. Now, you went to the scripture where it says, you know, these three things, faith, hope, and uh, what, is it, what is it? Hope, faith, hope, and charity. And the greatest of these is what? Charity. Didn't the Bible say that? But the context is that you're looking at the Corinthians was for that context when it was talking about how you treat people. It wasn't talking about how you live for God. When it comes to how you treat people, the greatest thing you can exhibit is love. That needs to be right where it was. But when it comes to your Christian walk, it's not about <laughs> the love. It's about the faith. Because watch this. You can't get love. That love provided the way, but faith is what gave you access to it. It is by faith that we are saved. Through what? Through grace. So, so, so faith is how you got to the cross. If you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and rose again. Am I right about it? You have to do what? You got to believe it. That believing takes faith. You can't get to God without faith. Watch this. If you should believe in your and con... Is that the word? Watch this. And isn't that the formula for your whole Christian life? Isn't that the formula for your whole Christian life? You want a job? You want, a, you want a better pay? You want, you, want, you want a mate? Whatever you want, you got to believe it in your, and confess it with your, and, and watch this, that's the faith process. It didn't say love God. Is this making any sense? And so until we get that faith is the most important thing to a Christian, salvation is the most important thing to the sinner. Because the sinner don't need to really hear about faith, you need to hear about salvation. The saint needs to understand faith because it is how you live your life. 
It is how you access what it is that God has given unto you. Because it doesn't matter what he's promised you. It's going to take faith to get it. How many love God and still don't have what you want? Did, did, that, did that resonate? I don't think the issue is, is do you love them? The issue is do you trust them? <laughs> is this making any sense? Because we love God, but sometimes we're not trusting them. We're not walking in faith. You, you, you're walking in love, but you're not walking in. That's why you don't have it. Amen? So I got to get understand that faith is the most important thing. So Romans 10 and 17. But once you get saved, the most important subject is what? Faith, the word of faith. That, that, that's what you need, the word of faith. Once you become a Christian, nothing is more important to you than faith. Watch this. Let, let's, let's look at those scriptures. But without, it is M to what? And I said, you really got to get that because you're trying to please them other ways. Am I making any sense? And God is saying, without faith, you can't even please me. He didn't say love. Did he say it? He said faith. And we really don't get that because we're trying to love our way in. But we don't believe nothing. Believe is the only testament to power. Me loving you don't, believe, don't mean I believe you can do something for me. We love a lot of people can't do nothing. But when you believe in a person, it's because they showed you something. Am I right about it? So the most important thing you need as a Christian is what? Faith. It takes faith and love. Did you hear what I said? It takes... Ooh, y'all make me go in places. I see how y'all looking at me. Whew. Even when you get in a relationship to love somebody, you're going to have to take some faith. You're going to have to believe some good about them. And you're going to have to believe more good than they show. Am I right about it? You hope they're not, they, who you married today, you hope they're not tomorrow. People are supposed to be growing. Am I right? See, see you be careful of a word you emphasize. So what word you emphasize shows if you're in faith. If I get stuck on supposed to be, it's because I'm distrusting. Ooh. All right, church. Is this making any sense? Okay, because see, what we focus on shows what we've been through. Amen? And, and, and when you really get it, you know, you designed the love. You don't even know you designed that way. You just, you just chose to be broken. Because that's not even the design. Can I help the church tonight? Let the church. <laughs> Amen. So watch this. Romans 10 and 17 says what? So then faith uh-huh. By hearing. And? and hearing by the word of God. What's the most important thing you need in your Christian walk? How do you get it? By hearing. And hearing by what? So there's a certain type of word that brings a certain type of faith. Because CNN, constantly negative news, brings a certain type of faith. Amen? So then faith coming by. So I wrote this way. If the word of God is not heard, faith will not come. Right? And if faith cometh, then faith was not there before it cometh. Or will not have to come. Am I right about it? So if faith needs to come, that means the word needs to be heard. Because the faith can't come without a word being heard. Does that make any sense? Okay, so I want to talk to you about it because... I want to talk about two things tonight. I, I, I did all of that to lead to these two things. I want to talk about words and unholy alliances. I want to go to 1 Chronicles 4 and 9. We're going, to, we're going to deal with words first. 
Y'all with me on tonight? Now, these are the things that break your faith down. So what you need more than anything is what? Faith. Your relationship would work if you had some faith. Your love failed because you had no faith. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yeah, people, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't love them like I used to because you don't believe like you used to. Love can't fail without faith failing. You stop believing before you stop loving. Your lack of love is your lack of belief. You start losing ground in the belief department. You start seeing things that start saying things. I said again, you start seeing things that start saying things. Am I right about it? What you saw said. So then you said <laughs> what you saw. And reporting the fact is the quickest way to die relationally. You want to kill your relationship, tell the truth. Ooh, this. <laughs> Somebody, I don't know what that means. You know what that means. Keep reporting the facts. You got to call that thing. What was it? We call those things. <laughs> you know, I was watching something the other day, and I know I'm off track, but I'm coming back, I promise. And she was talking about what would it be like if if the woman said to the husband, baby, you, you did your best, and, uh, and tomorrow I'm going to help you swing even harder. Y'all listening to me? What would it be like if, 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 if you said to your man, baby, baby, I love the way you go out there and get it. What would that, what, what would that produce in the home? Come on, women. What black woman, speak to me. He's going to swing harder. Am I right about it? All, all, all we need is a half a compliment. It ain't got to be a whole one. Yeah. Just half a compliment, and we're going to go out there. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Swinging on broken vines. <laughs> Toe up from the flow up. But I tell you what, we'll be out there swinging. And you know what? And what's strange, it sounds foreign. It sounds foreign because we have been turned against one another. Woo! I'm trying to stay away from that. So 1 Chronicles 4 and 9. <laughs> Ooh, we Lord help us. First Chronicles 4 now, what does it say? And Jabez uh -huh. was more honorable than his brother. Now watch this, Jabez, now his mother was a whore. Y'all know that, right? But even though his mother was a whore, he was more honorable. You don't have to be like where you came from. So you want to blame your environment, but no, that's your choice. Oh, my God. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brother and his mother... Call his name Jabez. Why? Because I him his father. Now, this is really interesting because people will call you what they've been through. They'll call you what they've been through. They felt stupid, so now you're stupid. Am I making any sense? And watch this. And people will call you a name that comes against the faith that God has for you. She called him pain because of her personal experience. And he had nothing to do with any of it. Am I right about it? Amen. Watch this. And so Jabez, so, so she, she, she calls him that, and the word Jabez means pain. So watch this. So Jabez called what? Now watch the Jabez called on God. What did he say? Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. He said, God, I want you to bless me. I want you to bless me indeed. What else did he say? And enlarge my 
He said, I want you to enlarge my territory. Somebody say, enlarge my territory. What else? And that thine hand might be with me. He said, I want you to be with me. Amen. And, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil. That what? Read. That thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve thee. In other words, that I might not cause pain because I'm having trauma from a name. Are you all with me? David has asked God, watch this, to change how he saw himself. Because before you go to your next place, you're going to have to see yourself different. And you can't see yourself from where you came from. And Jabez said, for what they've been calling me, I need a new understanding. And I need to walk in another identity because I don't want to be what she labeled me. So God, I want you to put in me so that I don't cause pain. I want you to enlarge me and I want you to bless me. And the Bible said that God granted him what he requested. He said, God, I want you to make me big. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be blessed. And sometimes what we don't understand is we have put ourselves down so that this false pseudo humility, we, we, we think we're being humble when really we're being fake. Are you all walking with me? Because God wants to take you to another level, but you're worried about the, the, the nobodies that you're going to leave because they're not going to be able to relate to you because you wanted to get up out of the dirt. Is this making any sense? You got to make up in your mind that 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 don't want to go can't come. I said that that don't want to go can't come. Stop begging it to come. Amen? Because all the while you begging, you stuck. I can't leave you until I leave you. Does that make sense? As long as I'm begging you, I'm still with you. Does this make sense? Okay, so he said, God, I need you to give me another vision. Give me a greater ability to think your thoughts. Isaiah 55 and 8 said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And what Jabez is saying is, I need your thoughts. Because a lot of times when we quote that, the church got fooled because we were thinking, well, you don't think like God. Well, then why is that? Don't get quiet on me. How are you not thinking like God? When he says, my ways are higher than your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts, he's not talking to you. Oh, it's quiet in here. Your thoughts are supposed to be his thoughts. Trust in the Lord. And lean. Don't, don't, don't let them take the heat and just separate you from God and then make God some esoteric being and you are nobody that can't think. Is this making any sense? What, what, what? 1 John 2 and 20 says that, that, that we have an unction from the Holy Spirit and we know all things. Is that what it says? So it can't be, we can't be talking to his people. I was quiet in the church. <laughs> are y'all walking with me? If your thoughts are not his thoughts, you're not connected to him. If your ways are not his ways, you're not connected to him. Is this making any sense? We were, we were, he regenerated our spirits so that we could be Christ-like in the image that every day we are coming, becoming more and more like. That's the Bible. Am I right about it? How are you? The more saved you are, the less you think like him. Can't be. I said it can't be. Are y'all walking with me? So away with this doctrine that's causing me to believe that God's thoughts are so high that I can't ascertain them. No, I'm reaching for them every day. Living them out every day. Grasping them and understanding them every day. They're a part of my being and my thinking every day. I say what he said. I think how he thinks. I move how he moves. Y'all with me? 
because he opened the book when I was created in his and that's my origin. Oh, you got to get it. Y'all with me? So God wants you to think like him. So you got to take your thinking up and start bringing God's ability down. Take your thinking up and stop bringing his ability down. You don't act like he can't do it because you don't want to think it. Or you want to act like he can't do it because you don't want to obtain it. Change really isn't hard, it's new. We want to say it's hard to excuse ourselves from striving for it. But the reality of it is change is just new. If you would use the word new, you could tackle it better. But you don't want to use new because then you wouldn't have an excuse. Is this making any sense? You can change if you want to. You can stay the same if you want to. Because all of it is a choice. What did I say? All of it is a choice. I think like God. I talk like God, I walk like God, I act like God, even if I'm not. Y'all want some Bible? Let the weak. <laughs> Woo, somebody help me tonight. Are you all walking with me? See, see, your problem is you're steady reporting facts. Amen? So, the bed says, I'm not going to let words separate me from my faith. Because if I let what she called me be my destiny, I'll never come into the fruition of what he created me to be. And what the enemy wants to do is put people around you that have, that have bad mouths. And they steady speaking negative things into your environment. Steady underestimating you on purpose. Because whenever you intentionally don't see me, it's because you do see me. Did y'all hear what I just said? You're not missing me. You just hate my standard. <laughs> Is this making any sense? They're not missing you. I said they're not. They see you or they wouldn't be your enemy. If you was really nothing, you wouldn't be a concern. Is this making any sense? Haters are spiritual. Jealous people have discernment. Whenever someone is jealous of you, that's proof you got it. You need jealous people to validate you. Ooh. You need a hater. Because lovers lie. Look how y'all looking. See, a hater ain't never going to lie. Lovers lie. You, you know, you have seen, oh, my, oh, look how your baby can't sing a lick. Oh, look, my baby can really sing. See, lovers lie. <laughs> haters it's the way they say it whenever they say you can't do it with attitude you killing it and some of y'all missed that you think you can sing <laughs> does this make any sense you think you can preach whatever you think you can with all that expression you know what I mean? You all tore up. You ain't nobody. You might as well, ooh, you're just right. <laughs> Am I making any sense? Why you fighting me if it is not real? What's the pit all about? If the dream has no substance, what's the pit all about? Y'all with me? Leave me alone. 
like a Dallas Cowboy fan. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sir Johnny. I'm sorry. Let me move on. Let me move on. Somebody said unholy alliances. Genesis 20 and 3, and I'm going to wrap it up because I ain't got that much time. Genesis 20 and 3. When you get to say amen. So what does it say? But God came to Abimelech. Mm-hmm. Like now, 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 God came to Abimelech, the Bible said, by night and said to him what? Now, this, this leads me to point A. You should never mess with a man's wife. <sighs> That's what God said. Now, it's interesting because if you notice, this is about Abraham and Sarah. And they hidden through, you know, this, this Philistine company, Philist, Pakistan, Palestinian region. And as they're heading through it, Abimelech sees Sarah and she's beautiful. I said, I want to see what, you 75 years old and you looking like that? Man, so I was holding it together. I mean, real, you know what I'm saying? Don't look at me like, I ain't lusting. I'm just saying, she was really, you know, you, who wants a 75 year old woman? She, she had to be something, something's going on there. Amen? Amen. And so the Bible said, when, and, 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 and Abraham being weak, father of faith, being weak, looking out for himself, said, look, when we go through this country, he said, you're so fine, that I'm going to have to let you go. <laughs> uh, I ain't dying over your finest. That's what he said, wasn't it? Isn't that what he said? If it come between my life and your finest, you my sister. If they ask me who you are, you what, 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 who are you? I'm your sister. Is that what he did? And so Abimelech, it, it happened like he said, and he betrayed her twice. And she stayed with him. I want to go to First Peter when it talks about daughters don't give in, be the daughters of Sarah and, and who didn't give in to fear. And when you look up the word fear in the Greek, it meant terror. Let me tell you why that's so important. Because ladies, and this, uh, ladies, I want you to hear this. Every man that you meet, at some point, there's going to be a valley of terror you're going to have to go through with them. Because he's not going to cover you like he should have. Look how quiet it's getting. And you're going to have to be able to weather that storm. Y'all walking with me? Because it's in the relationship. Now you're acting brand new right now. But he got to go through your season of disrespect. Oh, come on, church. Please walk with me tonight. Am I making any sense? And he told him, he said, he said to be like, you have to be like Sarah, who still called him Lord. Betrayed her twice, watch this, and let another man have her to save his own life. Did y'all hear that? You know, I think the scripture said that the man's supposed to be willing to lay down his life for his woman. I think, I think, I think Paul said that. I think he said it in Ephesians 5th chapter, if I'm not mistaken, that a man's supposed to be willing to lay down his life for his woman. Is that what the Bible said? And the father of faith ain't trying to do none of that. Are y'all walking with me? And she stayed with him, didn't she? And so Bimelech, so God says to him, watch this, indeed you are dead, man, because the woman you have taken, for she is a man's wife. Now, if she hadn't been his wife, we wouldn't have this visitation. Oh, that's so rich. I said, that's so rich. Because God respects marriage. 
People don't. But God does. But Abimelech had not come near her. In other words, he hadn't touched her. And he said that, now he started pleading to say, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation also? You going to kill all of us over this? Did he not say to me, he said, I didn't do this. She is my sister. And she even herself said, he is my brother. They both lying. How are you in my house? Y'all see it? Is that what he said? She said, that's her brother. He said, that's her sister. You visited me? So to me, you're going to visit them liars. There's a deep truth in this. Because sometimes you wrong and God's still fighting for you. See, you want to act like he only fights for you when you're right. Are you all seeing this? They shall be mine. <laughs> you don't mess with his stuff even when it's messing up. Oh, my God, I'm preaching better than you responding. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> and, 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 and he said, here's my brother, in the integrity of my heart. He said, I didn't even have wrong intent. He said, in innocence of my hands have I done this. He said, I, listen, listen, I had no ill will in this situation at all. And you visited me. And here's what God said to him in a dream. Yes, I know that you did this in the check of your heart, for I also would have you from sinning against me, not against them. Did you hear that? Had you touched mine, you would have been sinning against me, not them. He said, so I, watch this, so I kept you from her. Now, I want you to hear what he said. For also, from, from sinning against me, therefore, I did not let you touch her. Now, therefore, watch this, restore the man's wife. Why? Because he's a prophet. Might be a lying one. Oh, you got to walk with me on tonight. But he's a prophet anyway. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Restore the man's wife, or here's the prophet. Watch this. And he will pray for you, because I'm still upset about it. Oh, you ain't hearing me. They lied to you. You did this in the integrity of your heart, but you put your hands on what belonged to me. And so I will, the only way I won't kill you is if this lying prophet pray for you. My God, my God. Are you all here? Did you, is this in your Bible? Watch this. But if you don't give it back, know that you shall surely die. You and all who are with you. He said, I'm going I'm to put a hit on your whole house. That's what he said. Did you hear that? God said, I'm going to kill everybody in your family. Because you touched the lion's prophet wife. Ain't this good stuff? Now, here's what's interesting. Because here's what the Lord showed me in this. You know why Abimelech took him? He was fine. See, that's, that's what it looks like. He took her, watch this, because it was an unholy alliance. Let me tell you why. Because... The only way he could keep Isaac from showing up was to take Sarah. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. I got to, watch this, I got to break a coming blessing. Did you hear what I just said? I'm going to interrupt a nation by taking the mother of the nation, creating an unholy alliance so Israel will never show up on the scene. Satan knew that this was bigger. We thought it was because he was fine. Satan didn't care nothing about that. This is about robbing destiny. This is about making sure Jacob and Isaac don't show up. This is about making sure that the 12 tribes of Israel don't show up. Watch this. This is about making sure that he shall crush your head with his heel, and he shall bruise his heel with your head. This is about making sure that Jesus don't show up. 
This was an attack on the seed. Oh, come on, church. And sometimes, and, we, and, and what we don't understand is, Satan wants to put you with somebody so he can derail your whole future. And you think it's just about a fine moment or a temptation moment, and it's about what God has promised you that is trying to come here, that is trying to manifest, but he wants to hook you up with somebody that's going to take you nowhere. This was about legacy. Watch this, watch this, watch this. This was about the cross. Do you hear me? If he keeps her, there's no David. There's no Moses. Oh, you are hearing me. There's no Levitical tribe. There's no Joseph. All of these are the heirs of the seed that was produced between Abraham and Sarah. Are y'all with me? And you, you don't even understand that he's trying to hook you up with what's going to take you down. Does this make any sense? So this is about your promise, boo. Did you hear what I just said? Sir, this is about your destiny. We don't, we don't get upset about destiny like we should. Because we're clueless. That's why Jesus turned on Peter. I said he turned on him. Did you hear what I said? He turned his back on him. You heard me teach it. He turned his back on him because he came against the plan. Y'all with me? So you got to watch words, and you got to watch relationships, because both, if you're not careful, will overturn your faith. And sometimes we say, I thought God promised me, well, Lot is keeping you from getting it. You know what I mean? God can't talk to you because of who's in your company. Don't want eavesdroppers. He ain't on your destiny. And you don't even know that that's got your spirit upset is why you can't get peace. They fighting you so that you can't get what he promised you. Does this make sense? I'm telling you, they to get it together. Say it again, get it together. Tell God to open your eyes. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining our live feed and broadcast. We do appreciate your time, but we are eager and excited that you're joining our community, our faithful community of followers and believers, people who are life changers, who are world changers. And so what we're going to ask you to do is if you have a desire to give because this message is feeding you and providing everything that you need to help you get to that next level, to present your best self, then what we're going to ask you to do is partner with us. No gift is too big or too small in the kingdom of God that is going to be utilized to reach the untaught, the unchurched, and the uncommitted. So we thank you so much for what you're doing, what you've done, and what you will continue to do as a life changer. Thank you so much. Remember, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. God bless you.